Welcome back once again to Ferris the Bagabond's little jaunt across Drang Lake. Uh, we just managed to finish up all of our chores here in Majula, and I finally have the stats to wield the short sword. For the time being, it's basically going to be functioning as a slightly smaller, I mean slightly larger dagger, but I have unlocked the shortcuts in place, so I can head right on over to the uh, last giant right away. As you can see, its damage is a lot better, and it comes out just as, well, almost as quickly as the dagger, so it'll be doing us quite well as we clear our way through these last few areas. Though I'm going to be sticking with the hand axe because its moveset's a little bit better for killing the, uh, whatchamacallit, last giant. And I'm probably not going to be any real danger, so just using the weapon that I'm going to need the least versus the pursuer is probably going to be the best strategy. I'm just going to check the damage real quick. Yeah, it does slightly less than the actual short sword, so I'm going to want to be using this as much as possible because I want to have as much damage as I can for the pursuer. Now he pulls off his arm and I have some time to regen stamina and get a quick three hit combo at no cost to myself. Unlike the uh, giant lord, you can actually avoid his stamp attack by standing next to his other leg. Unless he's doing that. But that leaves him open for a little bit of free damage and I walk away with my victory achieved. That's 12,000 souls in the bank. And now I can head straight on through to the last part of the level. I want to grab the uh, regular soapstone sign before I fully head on to clear the area. And after that, all that's left is going to be the last giant. Not a whole lot left to this area, but I'm trying to keep an eye on the time and make sure that I'm clearing efficiently and effectively, trying to make the most of these shorter episodes. Oh goodness, I also have the soldier's key so I can actually go get my bastard sword now, should I choose to. Ow. I do hate the spear hollows so much. They're just the absolute dickens. There we go, can I circle around behind? I can. And is that enough? No, it's not. Why did I think that would be? It's not like I was using the dagger. That's him taken care of. It's just a few more enemies. Oh. Hmm. Is the axe any good at this? No, it's not. Do I have enough for a blunt weapon? I do. I do. I finally have the stats to two-hand the homunculus mace. And look at that damage. Look at that damage. I probably should have been using that versus the last giant, but I wasn't paying attention, and it's not like anything bad came of it, so it's not like I was missing out too much. Still looking to get rid of this small leather shield. It's even sillier, because you can see it's actually kind of got three side rings on it, rather than just a solid metal edge. It looks so silly. Just I really don't like the design of it. I really want another small shield as soon as I can get it. The backstab here. This actually has the damage necessary to get a one hit kill on a backstab. Ow. Stupid pathing. That's apparently not a backstab. The backstabs have been really weird this run. I'm pretty sure it's just been happenstance, but who can say? Because there's three of these guys, I'm going to want... Oh, I did not want to get the backstab. I specifically switched to one-handing so I could get the really uh, sweeping attacks. But apparently it doesn't... Uh, stupid spear hollow. I'm not even facing the spear hollow, and it's the one that's giving me trouble. just wanted to kill the sword wielder. Ow. This ambush is so annoying because it's a spear wielder and a pair of backup. It's just the absolute dickens. 
But that's basically the encounter. Some more aromatic ooze, so I can be sure to buff as much as possible. I mean, seven aromatic ooze. That's a ridiculous amount. Hopefully he drops his shield. We can, we can hope. Nope. No such luck. Don't want to be hitting the corpses on the ground, so I switched to the stabby moveset. And two Estus for the clear. That's probably not worth it in the end, but that's the price I've got to pay. I am looking to show off the pairing of the Pursuer once I actually get to him, so I'm definitely going to be leaving the uh, shield equipped for now. Come on over. I think that I should just be about at full health once I drop down an Estus. And that'll take me right on through to the boss, so that's it's always nice to be able to face the boss at full health, specifically. Now Pate will move on, and I've got his uh, white soapstone sign in case I ever want to do any co-op on this character, which is unlikely, though I do actually intend to do a little bit of PvP in the Rat Bro zones since it fits so well with Faros's character. Faros being the human who really bridged the gap between the rats and humanity and promised them the underworld so long as humans could rule the, rule the overworld. Now, Faros, not really being the commander of all humans at the time, was in no real place to make that promise, but the Rat King took it anyway and holds quite the grudge against the rest of humanity. Not that I can blame him. Okay, let's see what I can do. Come right around here, get my buff off. Ow. Probably a bad idea to buff in his face, but I wasn't paying attention by the time I entered the fog. Let's let's restart. I'll start at one less as this and we can just begin this whole thing again. There we go. Slashing attacks are slightly weaker against him, but not much to be done about that. There we go. That's so fun. And he actually stays still for quite a bit longer than most bosses since there, it's actually part of the mechanic of his boss fight where you're sort of meant to uh, parry him in front of one of the ballistae and have a summon do some work on him for you. Sometimes you just need the iframes. Parrying, not always the way to go. But it is really nice to pull off. It feels really gratifying. And that's why you play games for that little bit of gratification when you pull off something amazing like that. Ah, oh, so, so sweet. And really, it's it's barely worth it if you're not having any summons with you. Since it takes a lot of your own stamina and time locked up in that animation already. So it's not like you can punish him too hard if you do get the parry off. But it's still cool. And there you have it. That's the Pursuer. Note to self, don't buff in his face next time and you'll have a much easier fight. Let's, let's get that ring equipped. A little extra damage. Who says no to that? Come on. Grab my Drang Lake set and sword. And you've got this Estoc wielder who will parry you if you give him the chance to set up and kind of be ready for your onslaught. And while I'm not quite done with this area, I am going to head on and tag the Tower Apart bonfire just to make sure I have it set up before I come back to pick up my bastard sword from the little side passage down at the beginning of the Cardinal Tower bonfire. Come on through. It is nice how they kind of force you to get yourself acquainted with all the positions of the giants. Uh, when you're actually clearing through the level, as opposed to kind of just have you wander aimlessly for them at once you reach end game. So I, I definitely rate that little bit of design decision. The textures here are just absolutely terrible, but, you know, the gameplay is good, so I'll take what I can get. Honestly, though, you, you would think that they put a little bit more effort into uh, the water textures, especially if they're going to have an entire cutscene that basically shows them off explicitly. It's just, it really makes you wonder sometimes. 
The homunculus maze is actually going to be a godsend in this next area because there's going to be a lot of ironclads trying to mess me up and the blunt damage is just going to wreck their day. Kill all these knights. They're, I don't even know why they bother. It's like they think they can do something. I could get the ring of healing over there, but quite honestly I never use it. I mean, I'm already stingy enough with my life gems that I'll always have enough to heal up, no matter what. That I, I don't need that really slow dot. Not dot, but heal over time. That's just going to take up a ring slot and make me cautious about going into corrosion effects. Oh, no, 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 no. I was trying to clear the boxes in front of him, but he thought he was going to come right at me for some reason. Let's aggro this guy, bring him back so that the firebomb thrower isn't trying to join in. Swing, swing. I have the base stats required to wield that, and I already kill those guys in two hits. That should really tell you how weak they are to blunt damage. Any sort of really heavily armored opponent that has a lot of health usually takes not just regular damage from blunt attacks like that, but actually heavily increased damage. And it is just the best thing. God. That's the other really annoying thing about these spear-wielding hollows, is that they have the ability to just kind of ignore your attack while they're uh, trying to bash you with their shield. Two quick throwing knives means I don't have to worry about him while I come and gear through the level. And that is really important to... Oh, I walked just slightly too far forward. I'm gonna wanna back off an Estus. I did not back off far enough, but I got out, so that's okay. Goodness! I am really taking just a sloppy engagement here, so let's fix that. There we go. Much better. And I've got the Estus to shrug it off, so it's not going to be too big of a deal, but that was just a really, really terrible encounter. I don't know what was going on there. Get the stab attacks right on through. And this is what we came here for, my little bastard sword that's going to be giving me the basis of my punch here in the early game. This little ambush has got nothing on me. Once you know it's there, it's not really even an ambush. Goodness, he just wants to come all the way. There we go. Roll under that. Bop. That's him down. And he is a deer and comes right on over, swing and swing. If you mix in the heavy attack, you can be sure to kill him 100% of the time. Whereas just using light attacks can sometimes not deal their full health bar in a single two hits. Just because of the counter damage not always being there to proc. Ooh. He's going ham, but it's not going to do anything for him. Swing, swing, and he's down. Three little cracked red eye orbs and a soul. It's nice if you want to be doing any early invasions or heading right on into the... <coughs> whatchamacallit, the Brotherhood of Blood once you head on over to Huntsman's Cops, but I'm not, probably not going to be using those anytime soon. It's just nice to have, and they're a nice little stockpile for once you get endgame and maybe you want to use all of your eye orbs for invasions and the such like. There's the leather set. Probably not going to be too useful on this run just because I don't think it fits the look of a vagabond. Maybe a traveler or explorer, but certainly not a vagabond. That just kind of has a much better connotation of like lowly traveler, which it doesn't really fit the whole vagabond idea. So the what I'm going to be doing here is upgrading my bastard sword and upgrading my levels some. Once I kill the Lost Sinner, and... You know, that that's actually something that I'm... I still haven't worked out for myself, is... How do I want to advance from here? Because there's still the entirety of Hyde, and Sinner's Rise, and the Lost Bastille, all of that. No Man's Wharf, even. And while I do kind of want to handle some of that content. I don't actually think that I want to deal with any of that just yet. 
I'm going to leave my adaptability where it's at for now and start upgrading my regular combat stats. Probably going to want to get my vigor all the way up to 10 and from there start upgrading my strength because that's going to give me the most immediate return of investment. But I think what's what I'm going to end up doing is clearing through the Lost Bastille Tower Part Bonfire, then head over to Hide, clear all the way through No Man's Wharf, and once I've finished that, head on down to the gutter. That should give me enough souls and titanite in order to upgrade all the relevant weapons and really set me up in a nice place for the playthrough. Such a good move set. Honestly, for PvE, I... Oh, dear. Do I have any firebombs? I don't. Oh, God. Oh, and it doesn't even explode for me. For PvE, I prefer the Bastard Sword to the Claymore, though in PvP, the Claymore, I think, has a slightly more useful moveset because the thrusting attack comes into play more often and is much more useful for setups rather than actually clearing. In PvE, the strong, sweeping, two-handed attacks are just so useful, especially because they come out almost as fast as the R1s, so it has really great crowd control and the one-handed strong attacks are great for single target attacks. It's just an incredibly versatile weapon that really handles all sorts of encounters in PvE extremely well. Even from just base stats needed to use it one-handed and just plus four, it can already one-combo the uh, wardens here. That's always good to see. So many times, you by the time you get here, you probably aren't quite equipped to take them out incredibly quickly like that. But the Bastard Sword really has your back in that respect. It immediately allows you to start clearing with incredible efficacy. Just such a powerful, powerful weapon for the early game. It's got a great moveset, for PvE at least. And I, honestly, it uses so little stamina that it's useful throughout the game because you can just churn out the damage. Especially because its counter damage is actually pretty nice too. I believe it's 130? No, 120. But that's still pretty nice for a greatsword class weapon. And it's so very powerful, especially because of how light it is and how quick it slings. When you compare it to some of the higher end greatswords like, say, the Mastodon greatsword, which technically has a higher attack rating, but ends up still being outclassed because it's so much slower, takes so much stamina, and has such lower counter damage. It's all the things taken together that really make the broadsword just the masterpiece that it is, and by golly, it just does its job so well. This has been a really effective clear, only taking a little bit of damage in that first little area, so I think I'm going to go straight on to the four, not four, but uh, three Ruin Sentinels after I uh, gather up all of Macduff's drops. I'm still going to grab the Craftsman Hammer because that's just such a good weapon for clearing hide because of the incredibly powerful blunt damage, but aside from that, I don't think I'm going to be using it at all in the playthrough. The Dragon, not the Dragon Slayer, but the Old Knights are pretty much going to be the only place where I use it, and Honestly, if you're not using the Craftsman Hammer to clear the old knights, you're doing it wrong. I mean, it's just the perfect weapon to clear the area. The only times I could see you not doing that are if you, for whatever reason, chose to do hide first, and I never do that. I always come through the Forest of the Fallen Giants, clear my way to Macduff there, and then head on to hide, which is what I'm going to do now as well. So, yeah. Craftsman Hammer, I'm always, always a good fan. All it takes is 10 strength and dex to wield, effectively, and you can just start two-shotting the old knights. I mean, that's just so incredible. Such a good weapon. I don't know why you ever wouldn't use it, really. It, y use it, that's all I can say. It's almost as good as this here bastard sword, but, uh... <laughs> it is a twinkling weapon, so it's got that incredible base damage 
and the best part about it is that it's got that wonderful strike damage that is so, so very effective against really heavily armored opponents, as you saw with the Turtle Knights over in Owl. Our predictive range is a little bit better than most NPCs. But the Turtle Knights over in the Forest of the Fallen Giants, uh, just not doing this counter effectively. There we go. Only two of them left. Swing on in. I don't want to be greedy. Now I want to be greedy. Yeah. I love getting a double kill like that. It's, it really feels great. Hopefully I can bait these two into killing themselves on the box of stuff. No. Oh, okay. Okay. Lingering explosions. From soft, please. Ugh. You saw both of them fall down, and one of them died, I believe. And so the, the explosion had clearly gone off. I see that. Start walking forward, and get knocked to my feet and die. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not, not very good programming for that. It's very, very silly how that turned out. You could argue that I should have been more cautious and step back and waited a second in order to make absolutely certain that the explosion had dissipated but having an explosion like that that lasts for multiple frames and you can actually walk into it is just silly like once it's already triggered it should have triggered done its damage done the explosion and that's it sadly that is not the case and I paid the price for that Right now my internet connection's a little bit wonky, so I don't really want to be summoning anyone in. That's probably just going to be a horrible situation for both of us, and I don't really want to get anyone into that if they're not necessarily knowing what they're getting themselves in for. There we go. Just snipe them off one at a time. Get your hit. Just take a step back. If they come at you like that, and you can stagger them all, be my guest. This is going a little bit better. Haven't taken any hits thus far. Gonna try the same strategy because it worked so well for me the first time. And it doesn't work at all this time. Ooh. He tried to stab, but I was too far out of range, even predictively, so nothing came of that. Don't want to be taking the weapon durability damage there, but. I got a little overzealous and didn't think that last swing would kill him, so... Oh well. Depending on how fast I can get in there and start swinging, I can actually kill both of these... Oh, no, 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 that was bad. That was terrible. Uh, that's, that's more terrible. Much better. I'm gonna use the life gem that he dropped just to get myself all the way back up to full. Especially because this next encounter can actually be rather hazardous to your health. The Ruined Sentinels are a pretty difficult boss fight, and depending upon what weapon you're using can be even more difficult than they already are. I honestly wouldn't recommend using the Bastard Sword versus them, but uh, that's what's fitting the playthrough thus far, so that's what we're doing. Definitely gonna want to Aromatic Ooze. I don't believe I have any uh, of the grass that increases stamina regen, so we're set for the fight. This is all we've got. 300 damage a hit on a counter, that's pretty nice damage. So it's gonna take about... ow. Thought I could sidestep it. Clearly that was not the case. Should take about eight or nine swings. There we go. Get that. Bring out my witching urns. Once he gets right down there, I can actually peg him or her in the face. I honestly think they're female just because of their names. Like, Alessia doesn't sound very male to me, but at the same time, they're actually just animate shells of armor, so I'm pretty sure they're not even gendered in the first place, canonically. Nope. You guys have fun up there. I'm going down. I don't want to face both of you at once. 
Who's coming down first? You are. I believe you're the one who has full health still. No, it could, could be. I don't know. Don't... Uh, it's That's a very hard attack to dodge properly. But your best bet is either to back off so far that it can't reach you, or roll into it. Neither one is a sure thing, but I found that rolling into it yields the best results, regardless of what's kind of going on presently. I really need to back off and heal, and they let me get that off. Get that roll. Okay, Alessia is almost down for the count, so I want to... Nope. This time I'm going to get all the way back, swoop in for a double tap. That Now it's mono e mono, and I've pretty much got the fight on lock. Once you get it down to a single Ruin Sentinel, the fight's basically over since they can't move fast enough to punish you for healing. At least generally speaking. A few of their moves can be comboed in such a way to actually snag you, but generally speaking, if you're only facing one, you've got plenty of time to heal either with a uh, actual Estus or even just a life gem. My next two hits are going to kill, and that's game. And that's that. Not quite the optimal setup for taking out these Ruined Sentinels, but uh, I managed to pull it off without too big of an issue. Only used two Estus the entire run, though I did use uh, some life gems, so... Not as good as I could have done, but I'm, I'm definitely happy with that fight. I actually haven't checked to see if you can parry them, and I have a stinking suspicion you can, but that just sounds incredibly dangerous, and I'm still not quite as ballsy as to try to parry multiple opponents at once. I mean... That sounds like a recipe for disaster, if ever there was one. As you can see, I grabbed the target shield from down there, which takes a little bit less dexterity than the buckler, but it, again, it's one of those parry shields that I don't like because they take a little bit longer to activate the parry frames, and they get you kind of stuck in your animations for longer, so it's not something that I would really want to have myself set up with. Cleave through him, grab my last little bit of loot, and we're on our way to hide now. I'm going to come right on through. Pretty much nothing else here that I'm going to want. I don't think the Great Club's that good of a weapon anymore. I mean, it is still an incredibly powerful strength scaling weapon, but since I'm going quality, it doesn't quite fit with what I'm really going to be aiming at. I am going to be picking up a few pure dex or pure strength weapons here or there, but the great club, I mean the large club, just doesn't really seem to be one of the ones that I'm going to be going for mainly. Get this bad boy to plus five. So good. Yeah, you'll always be around on a grass. That's why I like you. Push that to the craftsman hammer so I can batter my way through Hade. Alright. I, I still haven't determined what pronunciation to use. I know that it's actually said somewhere in game, so there isn't a canonical pronunciation, but I've never taken the time to actually check up on what that is, so I just kind of flip-flop between the two. And now I'm on to hide hate, or what, what have you. Got my craftsman hammer. I considered actually upgrading it, because I can't think of anything off the top of my head that I'm going to want to use my twinkling titanite on. So I was considering just spending a, a spare one here on the Craftsman Hammer, but decided against it because I know that I'm not going to be keeping it for very long. Again, after I clear Hade with it, I really want to ditch it so that I can use a new move set instead of one of the ones that I've already done a whole run using over with my Ferran playthrough. Ooh, goodness. It's a little bit like Crimson Parma. Tell me that's a small shield. That is a small shield. And it... Oh. A leather small shield only weighs 0. 0.5? Goodness. I mean, I'll take the extra weight. And I do like the more wooden look to it. It's basically a foot soldier shield with a little bit of red painted on. So I will very easily take that aesthetic over the leather shield that I just... Uh, 
I, do, I hate the look of it. There's nothing good about it. It's just an ugly, ugly shield that's basically there for min-maxing the weight needed for a small shield. That's that's all it's there for. Come on through. This first bad boy is how I like to test the damage I'm going to be dealing. 494 damage on a counter hit. So beautiful. Get my bonfire just in case. I remember not doing that with the Cardinal Tower bonfire and we all saw how that turned out. Gravity OP, I'm telling you. Oh. There we go. Really? 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 Thank you. That was very strange. First he survived with that little bit of health and then my attack goes right next to it. But then again, that's why I think that the hitboxes in Dark Souls 2 are, generally speaking, pretty fantastic. I, I have brought up that there are some standout examples, as like any sort of dog ever, but... You know, there, there's, there have always been enemies who have had issues with their hitboxes, and... <sighs> it seems like they haven't gotten rid of that, so... I'm not going to fault them too hard on that. It's not like any of the other games were particularly better, it's just lesser known. Really? I could have sworn I was able to get the last hit off with before him. Get some cracked blue eye orbs. You, sir, need to go down so I can raise my plat- Oh my god. I keep going for the trade hits when I shouldn't. It's like, I can, I can look myself in the eye and tell myself that I shouldn't be trading here. I'm gonna get hit first. But, I don't listen to myself, and I pay the price. Uh, it's always a debate for me whether I'd go down to face Dragon Rider or Dragon Slayer, but I think I'm going to go for Dragon Slayer this time, just so I can take my Craftsman Hammer and clear right on through the bottom area once I've beaten Dragon Slayer. No, a Dragon Rider. It's so annoying that they put two enemies with incredibly similar names right next to each other. I always get the two confused, even in passing. But, no matter. They're all going to be very simple either way, so it's no big deal. These flying buttresses. Kind of weird to have it there. Just from an engineering standpoint, like, if you actually know anything about architecture, the way these flying buttresses are constructed to hold up pillars away from the actual load-bearing walls is kind of wonky and kind of is not what you want to be doing with buttresses. They're, they're there to actually provide support for the actual load-bearing section of the wall. And so y you can clearly tell that this area was designed a little bit more for aesthetics rather than actual historical accuracy or uh, keeping a realistic design. And that's that's totally fine. It's just something that I like to appreciate when they do it right. And, you know, note to myself when they do it wrong. Get some aromatic ooze going. I believe that you can parry the old Dragon Slayer, but... I'm not going to try and find out with his first strike. And I'm not going to try and find out with the AoE either. That sounds like a terrible idea. Oh. Goodness. I am just taking hits all over today. There we go. Nope. Not going to have it. Not going to have any of that. Back it up. Get the casual swing. Ah, oh, gosh, I cannot get the proper timing on these dodges. There we go. Oh, I'm gonna back it up. I'll take it. Let's try the parry. Oh, well, you kind of have to hit me in order for me to parry you. Uh, you know. <laughs> 
if you're if you're not actually gonna fight me, I'm not gonna bother. Well, that's a little bit disappointing. I guess I'll figure it out some other time, but that's him dealt away with. I'm probably actually gonna consume his soul. I normally don't uh consume boss souls, but considering I'm going into the gutter right after I clear through No Man's Wharf. I really want to have as much stats as possible because ugh, I, I hate that place so much that I just want to be as prepared as I could possibly be. There's just so much evil about that place. Rest here. Oh, looks like I've lost my internet connectivity. As I said, I'm having a little bit of internet troubles right now, but that doesn't stop me recording. It just kind of waylays the uploading process a smidge. However, I am going to be making sure that I've fiddled with it some and actually sorted that whole mess out by the time I get to about the mid and late game because I do want to actually have a few episodes of me hosting rat invasions just because Faros is such a perfect roleplay character for that and the little bits of PvP that I got to show off in the Faram playthrough were pretty nice, but I feel I could have done more, and I never actually spent any time doing dedicated PvP. Then again, I might take him into the arena now that he's got some time just waiting around for the next DLC, and that could be a nice place to get some PvP going. If you feel strongly one way or the other whether or not I should, then just drop me a message in the comments and I'll see what I can do to accommodate. I'm going to have to spend some time figuring out how to properly edit uh, the video to sort of cut, down, cut it down to all the PvP highlights, but I think it'll definitely be worth it to spend a little more time with the builds. I, I do really enjoy these very themed cosplay type builds, and so any little bit of extra content that I can squeeze out of them is probably something that I'm gonna sign myself up for. Here we get the green blossoms that I was bemoaning the absence of. There's not a lot, but you can get some more later, so it's not necessarily too big of an issue. Dragon Rider over here, I know for a fact you can parry, and will be doing so just so that I can kind of show off. Oh. <laughs> yes, let me just show off gets hit in the face. That's just behind his back. There we go. He actually spends almost no time staggered, so it's it's definitely not worth it. It's only something you should do if you know you have really low adaptability and will probably get hit by his strike and have no other way to avoid it. Is just throw out like a desperation parry. Aside from that, actually walking around him is the best strategy for avoiding damage in this fight, period. Even when he dashes away, he doesn't create enough distance to actually get a hit off on you. So any parrying you're doing is purely, purely for bragging rights. Dragon Rider Soul. Oh, <laughs> wrong exit. But now I can talk to Lycia. And I'm looking at the time now. That was probably about a really nice clear. So I'm going to talk to Lycia, get her to move, pop a bunch of these boss souls head on back to the Majula Bonfire, and spend all these souls on levels, and that'll be just about it. Yep, yep, yep. There we go. Not very gullible. Wow. <laughs> Did quite a lot in this episode. The first episode kind of was like a little setup, and this one actually allowed me to take you through five whole boss fights. Okay, then. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's because they all come in just such quick succession, but... Eh, still pretty cool. You know, looking at the time, I think I may have actually gone over just a bit, but... I definitely think it w Stop. Stop. I definitely think it was worth it to get that little bit of extra. I'm not going to be using sorceries, so the Ruined Sentinel Souls forfeit. I am not going to be using Faith to any real extent, so I don't want the Dragon Slayer Spear. Dragon Rider, he's a very int 
focused weapons with some strength in there too. So I don't think I'm going to want that. I am probably going to grab the Pursuer's Greatsword at least some time of the playthrough. Though the last giant soul can easily be consumed for no real qualms on my part. Get rid of all of these. And I like to have just one in my inventory of all the proud knight and greater souls, so just leave everything there. That should allow me to get my strength all the way up to 40. Start leveling decks. Only to 18? I want something more than that, but mm, I guess that's all I can get for now. That's going to be it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and next time we're going to be battling our way through No Man's Wharf so that we could head down, down into the deep, dark depths of the gutter. Woo. Yeah, well, look forward to that, everybody. <laughs> Bye.